name is Brian from Keys Motorsports and this is my F80 M3. Now while we started with the F30 platform and we did a ton of mods to it, what really got me into the F80 was actually working on customer cars. We had started with tons of 335s, 328s, 340s and all of that, but I'll never forget when Ray lent me his Yas Marina Blue F80 M3 to do turbos on. I put it up on the lift and from then I knew that I needed to get one. So. I worked on his car and then I had the opportunity to work on an M4 GTS with just 12 miles on it. Now while that car was wildly unattainable, the F80 after you know two, three years of me working on that car became a reality for me and it's been super exciting ever since. Now the story behind my F80 M3 is actually kind of different. I'm actually not a red guy. which kind of surprises people, I really like blue cars. Um, but I was in the market for an F80 M3 and I really wanted a mineral white one. I went up to Connecticut and found one that I thought was great. The dealer told me everything I wanted to hear on the phone and when I got there, the car was completely trashed and just wasn't really what I wanted. And then I saw this online. It was for sale by BMW of Chattanooga, Tennessee. So I called Chris, my operations manager at 8.30 p.m. on a Wednesday and I said, hey, Let's go to Tennessee tomorrow and pick up an F80 M3. So we got a 5.30 a.m. flight out of Philly. We flew into Tennessee, BMW of Chattanooga went and actually picked us up, brought us to the dealer. And one thing about the red cars is very deceiving. They never look as good in pictures or video as they do in person. And as soon as I saw the car, I knew that I wasn't going to be flying back. We actually drove this car 14 hours back in the same day. So we were gone for like 23 hours, but we finally got home and I couldn't be happier with the color choice and options and just the car overall. All right, so let's do a walk around and talk about some of the things that we did to the car. So since we're on the outside looking at the side, you have the best view of our AP Racing upgraded big brake kit with our variant wheels. The, this combination, in addition to the Bill Stein B16 coilovers, just makes the outside of the car completely transform. Uh, we've also done a lot of little things like mirror caps. We did the gloss black uh, fender badges, but what I really care about most is the performance aspect of things. So when you have an S55, one of the biggest things you need to do is a crank up. So I did mine 10 days after getting the car, although it adds no performance gains, it's an insurance policy and it's really good to have. So after I did that, I flashed it with boot mode stage one. Right now it's on flex fuel. So I can either run E85, I can run 93 or any blend in the middle. Now that's just a temporary setup. We have some tricks up our sleeves and some parts coming in the mail that it's gonna completely transform this, but I can't really talk about it too much. Um, also under the hood, we have some Evolution Raceworks charge pipes because BMW uses plastic pipes that get brittle and break. We have a Mishimoto charge cooler. I have a CSF heat exchanger, Mishimoto oil cooler, inventory intake, and some other little odds and ends. But let's head around this way and we'll check out the interior, talk about some of the other little aesthetic mods for when you're in the car because heck, that's where you spend most of your time behind the wheel. So you wanna make sure that, you know, things like your touch points and whatnot are exactly what you want because that's what you're going to be interacting with the most with your car. So just like Justin's car, we have the BMW OEM race wheel. We have some carbon trim in here. Um, unlike Justin's, it has the matte trim. Most of the F80 M3s come with the glossy carbon fiber. For whatever reason, they don't give you certain parts like the gear surround trim and whatnot. So we did add that. We added the, the carbon fiber brake handle. I think Tommy El Garage gave me that. I have a Black Forest industry shift knob and a couple other little odds and ends in there. Now, while I've had this car for two years, I actually have more parts on the shelf at this point still that haven't made it on the car because we've been so busy with other projects and other customer cars. Um, so super excited to get a lot of these things on here. But one of the things that I really love is the exhaust on this car. Now this car has an exhaust that isn't available to the general public yet, but it will be out soon. Spoiler alert, not really sure if I'm supposed to say this or not, but it does have an AWE exhaust on it. It is 100% EPA compliant. This car actually has stock 
downpipes, fully catted, and it also has the stock secondary catalytic converters. So completely EPA compliant, and it still starts good. And to prove it, I'm gonna start it for you. Now, as some of you may know, I have had a couple F30s. I've actually had three, I have two currently, and I had one that unfortunately was in an accident. And I remember when I had my F30, I thought that the M3 was just an overpriced version of an F30. But once I started actually working on it, really that Yas Marina Blue race car, that F80 M3, that really changed the game for me because once I put it on the lift, I saw how many upgrades the F80 has over the F30. Now don't get me wrong, the F30 is still one of my favorite cars and I still have mine. And there's a reason for that. But one of the things that we wanted to do today is we wanted to show you some of the differences that the F80 has from the F30. So let's put the cars up on the lift and we'll take a look. All right, so now we have Justin's 340 on the lift. I just wanna show you some of the differences. Now. As we're going through, I love the F30. I think it is an amazing platform, which is really why I still have one. Um, but I just want you to see, you know, some of the suspension components. The front is is really good. The, the big differences are more so in the rear. Um, people do put F80 suspension on here. Um, a lot of it has to do with even things like the bushings and whatnot, where they'll use, you know, upgraded components that are more racetrack driven. Um, something cool is actually, Justin has the Bilstein B16s on here, I actually have them on the F80 as well. So be curious to see the, the differences in that. Um, one of the biggest changes that you're gonna see, or we'll say differences, the F30 uses just a regular steel, it's like a, a tube method that's just welded together to make up their subframes. Um, that's one of the areas that you're going to see is a little bit more refined in the F80. As we walk back, there's just other little subtle changes like on an F30, we have a very functional piece of stamped steel where on the F80, it's billet aluminum. Um, so just little, little changes like that. But once we put the car up in the air, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Um, in the rear, also same thing, the suspension. The suspension is gonna be a little bit different, a little bit more refined on the F80. Again, this works perfectly fine, uh, but they wanted to make it a little bit beefier, a little bit more racetrack focused. Same thing with the subframe in the back here. It's just these, these tubes that are made of steel welded together where it's just a little bit of a different design on the F80. Um, but overall, I mean, the, the F30 is an incredible car. And I remember when I was younger, the car to get was an Evo or an SDI. Now I would say it's this car, it's a 340. This is the best car for the money that you can buy. All right, we have my F80 M3 up on the lift. Let's take a look at some of the differences. So some of the no things you'll notice right away, it has other ducting and other cooling elements, like this is actually an oil cooler. Now I put a skid plate that is made of aluminum. BMW had one of plastic, but still you get those additional cooling benefits. When you have an M car, it's funny, they put little M's everywhere. So it's, it's on the plastic here. If you look over here at the suspension, this is stamped with an M. As far as the suspension is concerned, one of the big things that BMW does is they give you a better bushing setup. So it may ride slightly rougher, but you're gonna get better road feel. And it just, once you drive the car, you're gonna get it right away. Um, I wish, one of the biggest complaints I have about my F30 is it doesn't have the same steering feel as this car. And that is a complete game changer. Now, one of the things that we pointed out on Justin's car where the subframe, where it is just, you know, big tube steels that are just welded together where on the F80s and whatnot, it's actually aluminum. So they tried to make it a little bit sleeker, a little bit lighter. Again, a lot of the stuff you're never even gonna see, but you can feel it when you're driving the car, you know, especially with the suspension components, the steering. Over here, we have the cross brace um, on Justin's car, it has stamped steel. On this car, you can see that I do have an aftermarket one from AWE because I have their new exhaust setup but even the factory one is just flat across and it's made of a single piece of aluminum. You also notice that these cars have additional bracing and whatnot. 
um, most notably under the hood with that big carbon strut brace. You know, that's BMW saying you need a strut brace. So if you don't have one, great upgrade. Um, in the back, you can see that this is a more drastic improvement over the F30 suspension. Um, the F30 has just like stamped steel for a lot of the suspension components where, you know, they just put a lot more engineering into what's on this car. And like I said before, one of the biggest benefits is they use a much better bushing setup. So you just get, it's more responsive, you get better feel and just overall a lot of advantages. In the back, it does have that tubular um, design for the subframe, but you'll notice that it's a little bit sleeker. It's a little bit smaller. They thought more about the positioning and the weight savings and things of that nature. The differential has these, these big coolers on it, these fins that help direct the air and make sure that everything stays cool. But enough talking about the car. Let's have Justin drive it and see what he thinks. All right, so right now we're going to go do a quick little drive. I'm gonna drive first and then Justin is going to take over. So one of the main differences with the F80 is that this one is a an automatic, but it's not just a regular automatic like you'd find in the three series, it's a DCT. So it is a dual clutch transmission. Basically what that means is if you look, there's no park button. The car thinks it's a manual, but you can see on here, especially people that drive it for the first time, it gets a little confusing because they see reverse, they see neutral, they see drive. There's no park button. Um, and that's because the car kind of thinks it's a manual. So if I let go of the brake, what you'll notice is that we're rolling backwards. Um, so that's definitely something that people get, uh, get a little weird about the first time. You don't, when you let off the brake, you don't just creep forward like in a regular car. So typically what you need to do is just flip your throttle a little bit and then that'll get you going forward. Like with this car, when, when you drive it, you're gonna see, you know, even like this, the steering feel, everything is just very firm. It's just, when you point it, it goes right where you want it to go. Um, it's, it's a much different feel than the, F, the F30. Um, really, the steering feel is the, is the biggest thing that I wish I could get in my other car. Yeah, the steering is a lot firmer than the F30 for sure. Yeah. I don't think it's quite like the E90, but no, it's better. Because this is full electric steering, right? Yeah. I like that. <laughs> it's funny, like, I don't review cars because I get in and I don't know what to say, but... It is kind of weird because like when you're sitting in here, it looks just like an F30 on the inside, but the driving experience is totally different. It's like, you know you're in a different car even though it kind of looks pretty similar. <laughs> Isn't it more scary when you're in someone else's or when you're <laughs> someone else is driving your car? <laughs> it's, okay. it's that like loss of control. Yeah. Well, that wraps up the weekend. Thank you so much for having me out, dude. The no show problem. was Thanks amazing. Thanks for coming. Yeah, um, staying at your house as always. You guys are so nice. Uh, well, checking out, coming out the M3, amazing. So just had an awesome time with you. And dude, I just want to say thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. Seriously, sure. elevated my channel to the next level. And yeah, we're, we're happy to help. So happy to have you. So thank you. Awesome, man. I know that you're a busy man, Godfather. <laughs> I'm going to leave you now. <laughs> okay. All right, put it in park. Um. <laughs> Just turn the car off. Oh, okay. That's it? Oh, wow. That's the only way to put it in park. Isn't that strange? Yeah, that is really weird. And if you put it, if you turn the car off when it's in neutral, it stays in neutral. And people, like, get out of the car and then the car will start rolling away. Yeah. So. When I test drove my E90, that was the first BMW that I had ever driven in my life. And they let me take the car out by myself. I didn't know how to put it in reverse <laughs> because like a lot of cars, they have the thing that you lift up and it goes over, but oh, with yeah, BMWs, it's manual. you just like have to really force it. And I didn't know that. So I had pulled into a parking spot and I didn't know how to pull out. So it took <laughs> me like 10 minutes to like 
trying to fiddle with it to get it to go. I remember the first, I drove an F30, the one that made me want to get one, mm -hmm. in Tennessee, and I was like, oh, I want to pop the hood and check out the engine. Yeah. So I pull into a parking garage, and I didn't realize you had to pull it twice. Yeah. And I pull it, and I'm like trying to lift up on the hood. I, oh, I probably no. look like the biggest idiot. And I'm like, this this hood won't open. And I'm like really like yanking <laughs> on it because I think it's just stuck. And I'm like, what the heck is wrong? So then I like shut it. Yeah. And then I pulled it again just once. And I'm like trying to get it. <laughs> and like it just wouldn't open. Yeah. I was getting so frustrated. And the car was so new. I was Googling like yeah. how to open a BMW hood. Uh -huh. And there's like, you know, it's kind of a dumb question. Yeah. So there's no information on it. And then. I learned about the double latch system, uh -huh. and I was like, I feel so dumb right now. 